we wait on the Lord, he shall renew our strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Anybody here tonight know that the Lord will step in on time regardless of your situation? Can you just make a little bit of Holy Ghost noise up in here? If you've been through some things that you know if it had been for the Lord who was on your side, let me hear you say, He will. He will step in. On time. Then I get a witness up there, y'all. Oh, He will. He will step in. On time. I heard David say these words. Oh, I've never. Seen the righteous, righteous forsaken. From the Macedonia Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, located at 569 Broadway, right here in Newark, New Jersey. We are extremely happy to come before you with Bible teaching that will enhance your spiritual development. And tonight's subject is plowing in hope. Plowing in hope. What does this mean? I don't know of a farmer yet who will plow a field and put so much work into it, plus the seeds that go with it, if he doesn't already envision a healthy crop. There's always hope, and hope is what you depend on, and hope and faith are very close to each other. You've got to believe that you're going to receive a healthy crop. You've got to know even in difficulty that hope will prevail. There's always something to look toward. When President Obama ran his campaign, it was based on hope. But our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. And we come before you tonight with this message of hope. Plowing in hope. When the storm clears and the sun begins to come through, there's always that hope that we won't perish in the storm, but there is hope that we're going forward. The light is shown. The sun begins to show through the clouds. And God lets us know in many ways in our lives uh, that sun is shining through, that we won't always be in the storm. And so it is tonight. There was a time when we had no hope but we have hope and as Apostle Paul said we are not as they that are without hope 
So we take you to the classroom of the Macedonia Church of our Lord Jesus Christ and we enjoy this lesson. Look at it as a spiritual meal. We hope that you will follow the syllabus that you have with you, that you will follow each scripture, and that after it we will recapitulate just the highlights of what we have discussed. Let's go to the classroom of the Macedonia Church of Christ. So the red light's off. I hit it. Two caterpillars and they had to cross a road and they were so slow and, and one caterpillar wanted to get across fast. And he said, let's go. And the other one said, no, I, I don't know, we can make it. So the one took off and he was going so slow, all of a sudden a big tractor trailer came along, squished him up. The other said, listen, there's another way to get across that road. Amen. And he went back and go, went into his cocoon, which is our prayer room. Are y'all with me? Yes. And he went into his cocoon, but the next time he came out to cross over the road, he didn't crawl over, he flew over. Let's say amen. He flew over as he came on out. So when that farmer sows the seed in this rocky, in this muddy land, his mind sees a finished crop. Those seeds look small. But in the word of God, the seed is the gospel. Yes. The sower is the preacher. Yes. And when those seeds are placed into the ground, oh, there's something miraculous about that soil. Amen. If you put it in water, it wouldn't grow. Right. If you put it in cement, it wouldn't grow. Right. If you put it in oil, it wouldn't grow. Right. But there's something about the soil that when you plant the seeds, you see a crop coming. Yes, and if you don't plant, you can't reap. Amen. So when we sow seeds, we expect a crop to result. A rich crop of wheat and barley and all kinds of things that will sustain us. He goes back to Abraham's hope and believing faith. And that's what we want to hit hard on tonight. Uh, that that believing faith, when God gives you something, he doesn't just give you a plan. He, he gives you uh, what's gonna, what, what you're going to see. And he told Abraham, get thee out from thy land and from thy kindred and into a land that the Lord thy God shall show thee. Read it in the 12th chapter of Genesis. But it was written, and Abraham... Uh, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. I, I promised that to you, didn't I? And when God said something, maybe Abraham didn't see many nations then. But if God said it, and he didn't see it, he still believed God that he would be the father of many nations. And God did just what he said he would do. I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not, as though they were. You see, when God looks and sees things, he doesn't look uh, at just the present. He's looking at the beginning and the end. He sees this universe from beginning to end. So... Things which be not as though they were. Yes, Lord. And your planting of a crop may not be the fruit now, but God sees it Amen. in the harvest already. Who against hope believe in hope. This is Abraham now. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. The believing faith of Abraham and his hope was the thing that 
God rewarded. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. See, it's, it's impossible for a 75 year old man or a 100 year old man to have a child with his own body, now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yes, yet the deadness of Sarah's room. I don't care what they say. He staggered not at the promises of God Amen. through unbelief, yes, but was strong in faith, yes, giving glory to God. Oh, 100 year old man, I can't see it. Amen. But God promised it to me. I see the clock. So being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Whatever God has promised, he is able to perform. And with God, all things are possible. Therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Yes, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for who? Us. Us. Oh, also. also. Yes, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. When we look at this minimal sized plant, yes, someone say, I can't eat off that. That's not going to feed me. But the Lord has a multiplication formula for anything. Yes, uh, when he broke and had just a few fish and five loaves of bread and fed the 5,000 and had 12 baskets left over, yes, God has a monopoly on multiplication and if we would get in God's hands if we were the seed of the plant that would get in God's hands he can multiply us yes, as well and so when we look at it, the wild men slipped the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way Jesus was telling a parable here in this scripture of how uh, when you sow a crop, you're going to have to expect some trouble. <laughs> there's, going to, there's going to be famine. There's going, we're going to have the locusts that come around. We have wild animals. Uh, we have groundhogs down in the south. And I was feeling so bad I hit a groundhog on my way to Virginia. And I told my father-in-law about it. He said, you don't know. You've done a farmer a great service because that groundhog was eating up everyone's crop. <laughs> well, Jesus was telling the parable of the people, the devil, who sows tares so that your crop won't be harvested. He will sow weeds. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. And we know that tares look just like wheat. And then the Lord Jesus Christ told us, said don't let, let the tares, every church has tares. Amen. You have people who are for you, and then you have people who are going to tear you up. Yeah. And I don't mean T-E-A-R, but I mean tares as it is portrayed in the Bible. Yes. But Jesus said don't pull them. You see, I've been in a wheat field and I tried to pull a tear just for the illustration and the whole wheat fell apart. So Jesus said, let the tares grow with the wheat. And when I come, I will separate it out. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, this, this is not thou so good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tares. And he said unto them, an enemy have done this. Everyone, everyone who, who, who is harvesting the crop has an enemy. Are y'all with me? And the servant said unto him, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? So uh, there are many tares. I always used to love to blow uh, these dandelion stems here. And they would grow up on a lawn. Amen. Amen. And uh, when when we would blow 
these stems, they would go out and so fluffy. Little did we know that we were just sowing dandelions. We were making dandelions to grow. And so weeds will grow up uh, in your vineyard. And you have to be able to cast them out. Uh, the story of Achan, I don't have time tonight, but the Lord told the congregation of Joshua, and said, yo, you have an evil thing in there. You need to get it out of here. And there was the battle of Ai, and they had whipped him all over the place. And when he did and got that evil thing out, they had victory over Ai. So let's turn over the soil. And planning with a full expectation that what I see is not what is going to be. What I see in this field is really a finished crop. What I see, even with my two horses and my broken down plow, I still see a finished crop. A crop that will feed hundreds. And only God can make it. But if you don't sow the seed, then you can't reap the crop. We must put our shoulders to the plow and make room for the seed. And that's hard work. I remember my grandfather used to wrap the, the reins of the mule around his, his wrists. And he would, he would control that. And he had, to, he had to do straight lines. He could not go and say, I think I'll turn right here or I'll turn left here. No, they had to be straight rolls. Yes. And in the heat, that was rough going. Now you had to do some hard work. Yes. And so this has been done down through the centuries. And God will always give us the tools that we need yes. to make straight rolls. He will give us the tools. And when the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are always going to be few. Yes. We need laborers in the gospel, in the 